Hey, my name is Frank, and this is what we did last night. Actually, last night we didn't do anything because in Arkansas we had snow apocalypse. Everything got white, everything from sleet and snow came down, and so all of our youth events and all the youth events across the state pretty much were canceled last night. And so I ended up spending my night at home um, playing Evolve on Xbox One. But I want to give you guys a, a little uh, 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 look at what our our Arkansas trund tundra looks like real quick so this is my this is my backyard it's all white and this is my dog who you might not be able to see right now because it's a shadow but wants to come back in but I'm refusing because I'm shooting this video she ruined the perfectly flat whiteness of our backyard because she's running around because she doesn't see snow very often this is the front, and I'm not going to go all the way out there because it's freezing. Somewhere over there, you see little kids making a sleep man. Not quite a snowman because a lot of it's sleep. A lot of you guys make fun, a lot of my up north friends, like my friend in Illinois, makes fun of me because they say we don't really get too much snow and we freak out about it. And rightfully so because we don't have a thousand snow plows like you guys do. So when we get snow, we are stuck at home and every school is canceled and all the bread and milk is gone. So all my best lighting stuff is actually at the church right now and all I have is my camera and I don't have a tripod so I'm just going to be doing this selfie style in front of my back door window where I can get the best lighting on me. Um, but since we didn't do anything last night, I don't have anything to really report about this is what we did last night. But what I do have is a couple questions, five questions about youth ministry that's kind of been on my mind that I've been talking to other youth pastors about and I want to ask you guys and maybe in the comments below this video or the comments below any of the websites this is on, you guys can kind of talk about it and hopefully my dog doesn't make too much noise keeping us distracted. So here's the first question. Are youth ministry blogs relevant? So I write for a youth ministry blog called youthmen.org and one of the things I'm always asking and questioning the other people on staff, on all the people who write and contribute for the website is, are youth ministry blogs relevant? Do people still read youth ministry blogs? Now I can look at the stats and see that every time we write a new post <laughs> That's my dog. Every time we write a new youth ministry post, um, we get stats, people read them and stuff like that. But my question is, is anybody really writing anything new? Like, is there anything worth talking about that's relevant towards youth ministry blogging and, uh, and things like that? Like, there are good posts out there. Like, on our site, there's a post about rookie wisdom or uh, veteran, like wi wisdom for rookie youth pastors. And I think that's a valuable resource for a lot of the uh, new up and coming youth pastors, people who are in college, things like that. There's some good stuff for you guys to get from that series. Also, any blog post that talks about theology and doctrine, I think it's rare in youth ministry to talk about those type of things. Not maybe, a lot of people are talking about strategies and, and resources, not talking about how, you know, the atonement and soteriology and eschatology, how that all involves and works in youth ministry and so even if it's stuff that I disagree with I love talking about theology and youth ministry because I think it's rare rarely discussed in youth, the youth ministry world and so that's why uh, you know when I write I want to write stuff that not many people have talked about you know what I'm saying I think there's a thousand articles about you know what apps you're using or where do you get like free logos and stuff like that and, or you know is Fiverr from the devil or should you use Snapchat and you measure all those type of stuff are kind of like everyone talks about that kind of stuff. But no one's talking about like how has, you know, Pentecostal theology affected worship in most youth ministries. Like that kind of stuff is relevant and I think it's important to talk about. And so anyways, uh, do you guys read blog posts? Do you guys like reading blogs? Is that outdated uh, medium in youth ministry? Or is YouTube and podcasts replacing that medium? Where do you guys go? What do you like to read? What's your favorite blogs? I know I like reading youthmen.org or youthmen resources. They're because I write for it, so I like it. But DYM has some good stuff. There's some other places that have good articles. I love reading non-youth ministry websites that talk about youth ministry, like uh, the Gospel Coalition. Like back when the resurgence was around, when they wrote about youth ministry, it was always intriguing to me because I wanted to see what. People who have no stock in youth ministry talk about youth ministry, so that was always interesting to me. So, what do you guys read? What do you like to read? What do you want to see read on youth ministry websites?
Another interesting topic that I want to talk about is uh, conferences. So I haven't, I've, I haven't been to many conferences uh, because I haven't seen a ton of value in them. And I know that sounds kind of arrogant. It, honestly, it's probably because none of my schedules, none, none of my schedule works with a lot of when you fishery conferences or where they're located. Because in Central Arkansas, I would always have to drive six hours to go to a conference. Um, but in the next month, I'm going to two youth ministry conferences. Here's my dog, Grace. She wants to be on film and look my beard. Um, I'm going to like two or three youth ministry conferences in the next month and a half. And so my question to you guys is what do you guys, what, why do you guys go to youth ministry conferences? What conference do you go to? What do you want from a youth ministry conference? Like my dream youth ministry conference would have awesome worship, a free t-shirt, and, and like a hip hop concert, and uh, like Matt Chandler or Eric Mason speaking at the conference. I think that would be an amazing youth ministry conference. I know youthmen.org, the, the site I blog for, are looking to make a conference happen sometime either in the fall or in the spring and 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 we're, we're, we're interested in what you guys want um, but I'm interested in what you guys want because I want to know is it worth going to youth ministry conferences I think there's a thousand of them which one do I go to like which is the best one and is it worth it why do you go to the one you go to love to hear about that kind of stuff all right something that's been on my mind for uh, the past like month or two uh, is also lock-ins I hate lock-ins and I'm actually doing one because I'm an idiot um, but uh, what, what, what do you guys do in your lock-ins? Do you like lock-ins? I absolutely hate them, but I'm doing one because our kids, since I've been in this church, have wanted one, I've avoided them, but um, I'm scheduling out a lock-in in April that keeps everyone busy, that's very simple, that doesn't need a ton of leaders to, uh, to kind of make sure it succeeds. And a, and a youth ministry conference where I don't, a youth ministry uh, lock-in where I don't have to buy night vision goggles so I can make sure kids aren't doing bad stuff during underground shirts. I'm trying to make it as simple and safe as possible. So, uh, do you like lock-ins? Do you hate lock-ins? What, uh, why do you do lock-ins? Is it just purposeless because you just want to have fun or is there a reason why you do lock-ins? Is there some kind of spiritual meaning because when at two in the morning when all a bunch of kids are together a lot of baptisms happen. It's like what's your reason for doing lock-ins? Let me know. Another question I have is what do you do to get your mind off youth ministry? I think every good youth pastor will agree that unlike any other job or career you could have, um, you think about your work outside of church. You think about your work outside of the nine to five or whatever your schedules are. Um, I think about youth ministry all the time. Like I'm watching YouTube videos for fun and I'm thinking about I can do that bit as a funny video for youth group. Or um, I'm listening to a TV show or watching a TV show and there's a great like point that I'm like I could use that as a illustration in a message. Um, what do you guys do to get your mind off youth ministry and kind of go into the uh, a place of rest? And so I know for me, I can binge watch TV shows on Netflix or I can play Xbox One. And uh, for those of you who are playing Xbox One, what games do you play? I got NBA 2K and Evolve right now as my two favorite games. I'm on consistently trying to play and get my mind off of work so I can um, kind of have a time to myself. So what do you guys play? What do you guys do? What do you guys do to get off of uh, your mind on off of youth ministry and into a time of just like rest and like Sabbath so that way you can kind of get some order in your life so let me know what you guys do for fun all right the last question I got for you guys is what are your most important apps for youth ministry I'll tell you mine right now the the most consistent apps I've used on a consistent basis for youth ministry have been youth ministry tracker it's it like at first I know people were hesitant about it but it really is one of the best um, attendance apps and it really is worth $15 like I, I, I didn't pay $15 I got it on early when it was only like 10 or something like that um, but the way it's evolved into what it is today has been a great app uh, uh, I, I love it my leaders love it um, and I've used it you know on a consistent basis trying to look up phone numbers emails uh, I need to pick up a student their address was in there um, and it has great uh, stats I can use as well as um, uh, ways to export the data. So the Youth Ministry Tracker app is a great app. Um, another app I use a lot is GroupMe for my leaders. I don't use it as my mass texting to the students, but I use GroupMe um, to talk to my leaders and it's been great to kind of just 
quietly talk to them away from you know using normal group text like you know in your in your messages app, um, but be able to discuss different things as well as goof around. And that right there is a text from my group me app to, of my leaders telling me about what they're doing. Um, it's also been a way for me to kind of get in the, the lives of my leaders and kind of knowing what they're doing, what's going on, how can I pray for them. Another app you could use besides group me that's probably a little more intuitive that you could use also as a desktop client is the, is an app called Slack. We use it as our youth ministry uh, leadership, a youth men leadership, leadership team, um, to talk to each other and discuss what we're doing. Um, and it's a great tool I think that you use for youth ministry, especially because you can use it on your computer, on your desktop, not just on your phone. Two other apps I use a lot is Word Swag and Legend. Word Swag is a great. Uh, I used to use the app called Over to put just words in front of a picture, but Word Swag has more um, kind of pre-made, hipstery looking layouts that is just type in the words and it will make it look awesome. And then the other app is called Legend, and a lot of you guys have kind of been seeing me use that a lot. It kind of makes just like a, a, a motion animated uh, word picture, you know what I'm saying? So like a six or seven second uh, video of words moving in and off the screen to kind of display your message. And so those have been cool. And then in the last app I use, um, that's kind of not necessarily for youth ministry, but I use it a lot for those word things is uh, it's called Unsplash. And basically it's, uh, it's free royalty free stock images that you can use as background pictures for your words. Um, videos and pictures for Instagram. So all this stuff is going to be linked below. If you have any questions, let me know. Hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, IG, so all that kind of stuff. Let me know um, how I can help you in your ministry. And hopefully next week there will be no snow and I will be able to talk about what we did last night and talk about you on the Wednesday, which is what we're currently in, but I haven't done yet. So God bless you guys. See you later.